LA this week. Tens of thousands of art lovers have gathered here at the LA Convention Center for one of the hottest tickets in town, the LA Art Show. I'm Gil Reyes, I'll have that story next. I'm Anna Margos. The dream is to have a network of healthy neighborhood markets where residents make healthier food choices in LA's urban core. More on that coming up. The LA Zoo welcomes an adorable new resident. That's coming up. Hey everyone, I'm Umema Rashid. Here's what's happening in LA this week. As the immigration crisis south of the border continues, Angelinos are stepping in to do what they can. Councilmember Gil Cedillo and local nonprofits recently visited Tijuana to hand out supplies to refugees who are enduring unbearable living conditions waiting to enter the U.S. We've decided to uh, honor Martin Luther King and Martin Luther King Day of service by going down to the uh, city of Tijuana we are uh, going to take humanitarian aid to refugees who are legally applying to come to our country and apply for asylum. Uh, we believe that the crisis at the border is not one of security, but one of humanity. We're taking like, blankets and toiletries, and hopefully we can have uh, some impact today on the quality of their existence. Martin Luther King, to me, is a very important person. I respect my father, number one, and Martin Luther King runs high number two. He's that important because of what he uh, sacrificed himself, not for himself, but for the betterment of the uh, African-American people and the world. We're here from LA trying to you know, bring some support uh, to the members of the caravan. As you probably know, there are thousands of them that have come arrived to Tijuana with the hope of crossing the border and looking for political asylum. Now they are facing a reality, and the reality is that um, that hope, that opportunity doesn't exist. And it, it's not that easy as they probably at one time believe. And this is the result. Some of them are gonna have to wait for months before they're able to see a judge. We are here to help. We, we brought some blankets, we brought hygiene products, we bought some food. Today on MLK Day of Service, we actually came to Tijuana to visit a few shelters for the immigrant caravans. All these individuals who have been here for four months, stuck in Tijuana with no outlet uh, over to the United States. So we brought humanitarian aid today uh, in hopes to help out, make a dent in uh, the need that we saw out here today. We saw children, we saw families, we saw three different shelters, we visited one clinic, and all I can say is that the need is tremendous. It's important for Angelinos to get involved because Los Angeles is the city to lead our country in showing what it means to be open and welcoming immigrants. And we know that a large percentage of these people from the caravan will end up in our neighborhood. And so this is our way of us to do humanitarian work across borders. I was very moved by today. Uh, two things. I'm moved by the stories, and then I'm moved by the life that exists in these young kids, the energy, the enthusiasm, the excitement. The children are children. And even in the most difficult circumstances, they can be happy with a, a new toothbrush, a new bar of soap, a blanket. I'm also inspired to go back and make sure that Washington does its job, uh, that we respect the law. Uh, we are part of the world community, and migrants and refugees have rights, and we should respect that. Some good news if you're planning to start a family anytime soon. A new motion at LA City Hall may give parents a little more cash and a lot less stress when it comes to paid parental leave. Anna Marcos has more. Ah, the joys of seeing your little ones make mud pies. For more LA parents, these simple joys may soon become both more enjoyable and more affordable, as council members Nuri Martinez and David Rue seek to beef up paid parental leave in LA. We will empower Los Angeles' 
hardworking mothers and fathers the tools to be outstanding parents without fearing that they're going to lose their job or lose a paycheck. I think that that would be helpful, yeah, to, had I had it when I had them. I mean, it sounds absolutely like it would be a positive thing for parents and for, for moms, absolutely it would be. Yeah. Currently, California's paid parental leave policy covers up to 18 weeks of leave for new parents, but employees only get 60 to 70 percent of their pay. For many, especially low to mid-income families, 60 to 70 percent of their salaries to live in Los Angeles is not enough. So what they're choosing to do is um, to continue working even against doctor's orders. Families living paycheck to paycheck should, not be, should be able to sleep without fear of losing their livelihood. The council member's proposal directs the city attorney to study options for a paid parental leave ordinance in L.A. in which employers would pay the supplemental part of the parental leave not covered by the state. I feel like the most important people to be around a newborn would be its mother and father, and I think it's a great, I think it's a great idea if parents could financially get paid to be off a couple of weeks with their newborns. The study also asked the city to look at potential impacts on small businesses and nonprofits, and also to look at options such as exemptions and other ways to help those small businesses cover costs. We're trying to figure out a mechanism by which we, the city, can figure out where that money would come from. But it would come from the, from the employer, whether it be through a, a, a write-off or whether it be through a subsidy. Let me be clear, paid parental leave is, a good, is good for families. It's good for business and it's good for Los Angeles. Studies show that paid parental leave cuts down on unemployment rates, especially for women, and benefits companies as they retain more of their workforce. And of course, it benefits the little ones and the parents who get to spend quality bonding time without the money worries. I'm Anna Margos for LA This Week. Martinez and Rue hope to get the proposal through committee and council and maybe get approval within the year. They hope to follow in the footsteps of San Francisco, which already has a similar policy in effect. As we know, it's hard to eat healthy when there are very few options available at your local grocery store, but things are slowly beginning to change in several LA neighborhoods as more fruits and vegetables are starting to appear on store shelves. We visit one small corner market. A typical afternoon at Lupita's Market near downtown LA. Hungry kids from nearby schools flock here for an after-school snack, often chips, sodas, and goodies. More flavorful than healthy food. But the typical snacks are already making way for more fruits, yogurts, and healthy prepared foods. Lupita's market owner, Luz Maria Arango, and her mother have already launched their plan to give residents healthier food choices. Um, we're surrounded in an area where there is absolutely not a lot of grocery stores that sell good quality food for good prices. So if I could do something with my corner store and build something that is great and affordable and beautiful to offer to this community that I truly love, I would love to do that. And Arango has plenty of help. Los Angeles Food Policy Council hosts the Healthy Neighborhood Market Network program. The Healthy Neighborhood Market Network program is a program that works with small market business owners and helps them become successful healthy food retailers in underserved communities. Council District 13 staff members are helping with the red tape as she makes changes to her market. And the Los Angeles Food Policy Council is on board. Its mission? To stamp out so-called food deserts in L.A.'s urban core. It's addressing the high rates of obesity, diabetes, and just poor eating habits that community residents and underserved communities have. And it's not so much because the habits are there, but, but because the access is not there. So they don't have access to making a healthy choice. And that's where small corner stores come in, is bringing in the option into these communities. At the moment, the Healthy Neighborhood Market Network is helping about 20 local stores beef up their healthy food choices from this to this. And about two of the stores a year are getting an entire transformation, including Lupita's Market. This project, uh, among many others that we work with in the community, was important to us because of the emphasis on the food deserts. 
and the community and we wanted to come in and help out and we do a lot of retail work and we felt like our expertise was one that could very simply transform this space. The healthy options are going to be front and center when people walk in. So we're featuring the center area in our designs so that it draws people into the storm to where they're making sandwiches. I noticed you guys are eating a lot of junky stuff. Yeah, I know it's not healthy, but like you could do it like at least once in like a week and stuff because it's not really healthy. You can get fat. Yeah. I'm like, sure you don't eat it every day. Not every day, but I'm not gonna lie. I do eat it often, like very often. One kid is pushing away the goodies for a nice, healthy bottle of water. Like eating healthy is good, but like if they want to eat like like let's say a Snicker bar, it's it's all right, but like don't eat a lot. But worry not, training and food education are also part of the plan at Lupita's Market. Yes, I mean, who knows, if I can teach a class, if, you know, you have five bucks or you got ten bucks, how can you eat healthy with those five bucks? More choices, more access, and more education just might mean more residents develop a taste for healthy. I'm Anna Marcos for LA This Week. Turning now to LAPD's latest graduation ceremony as 52 new Los Angeles police officers take the oath to protect and serve. We were there for their special day. I'm feeling mixed emotions. I'm joy, proud, I'm just excited to hit the streets and make a difference. A proud moment for Rodrigo Soria as he officially becomes part of the force at the Los Angeles Police Department, the second largest in the nation. He and 51 others and their families gathered at the Academy's graduation ceremony to mark the transition. What stands out for me the most is the, the, what the badge represents. It's known across the world, not just the nation, across the world, and that's something that stands out to me the most. It's so regarded as one of the best academies in the nation, and I'm proud to have completed it. Officer Saria, a resident of the San Fernando Valley, worked in retail before joining the LAPD, and that's where he made friends with a few police officers who guided him into being a cop. When I was 18 working for Nordstrom, the Los Angeles Police Department officers would respond to our store to pick up the shoplifters and then just the positive interactions that I had with them, them encouraging me, giving me guidance, you know, pushing me towards applying and leaving that job behind. This is something that really did it for me. Lorena is Officer Saria's mom. She says that the police academy helped her son become a man who wants to be a positive role model. He has taken an oath to serve his community and he's going to do it to the best of his ability. I feel very proud. They represent the best of the City of Angels. They, we've chosen very carefully. It's, it's difficult to, to become a, a police officer in this city because of the, the rigors that we require, not just your emotional intelligence and physical capabilities, but, but your heart. Uh, what's your character? Officer Sampson is feeling all kinds of emotions as his career starts with the LAPD. Originally from Tampa, Florida, and a veteran from the Navy, he's excited for his new chapter as an LAPD officer. It's almost... Unreal. It's, I almost can't believe it, how far I've come compared to where I was the first day. And now as part of the LAPD family, these officers will protect and serve us all. Want to buy some art? Well, LA is the place to be. Gil Reyes takes us to the city's biggest art show of the year. The LA Convention Center home to the E3 Gaming Expo, the LA Auto Show, and so many other events hosted the LA Art Show for its 24th year. Executive Director Cassandra Voyages told us why it's unlike any other art show on the planet. The beauty of this show is that you can visit so many galleries in one space and so many different types of artwork. When the LA Art Show first got started back in 1994, there were just 14 galleries and 250 attendees. Now it has grown to over 130 galleries and art institutions with tens of thousands of people attending. Timothy Yarger, a Beverly Hills gallery owner, showed us this original David Hockney, valued at $350,000. And don't adjust your television sets. These are artist Mads Christensen's light works made with energy-efficient LEDs, a hot seller at $32,000 a pop. Part of the reason that Mads Christensen has touched collectors and buyers so deeply is that 
unlike a static work of art that's in your home, you might enjoy it, but these change constantly. So the emotional and visual experience has a lot of stamina. The other thing that's important, it's not on a loop. It never repeats itself. Like cars? Well, they had cars too. An LAPD black and white, but actually just half of one. There was art from all over the world. And closer to home, from ArtShare LA, based in downtown's Arts District. The space nurtures up-and-coming artists. We focus on giving artists access, and we really kind of want to stay ingrained in the downtown community, so we thought S.C. Marrow would be the perfect artist to bring here. S.C. Marrow, a Skid Row artist, made this piece with 6,600 pennies. A lot of my work is about the, the transmutation or transformation of materials, but the underlying message is about the transformation of the individual soul. Which will no doubt be inspired at every colorful corner of the L.A. Art Show. Folks at the L.A. Art Show say prices for individual works range between $6,000 to $1,000,000. I'll take two, please. And they were off. Hundreds of runners turned out for the half marathon and 5K run through iconic Griffith Park. Grab your running shoes and see if you can keep up with our own council member, David Rue. Set! Good morning. Uh, I am proud to be here on the world famous, the largest urban park in the nation, Griffith Park, to host the fifth annual Griffith Park Run. We're really happy to put on this event every year. The LA Parks Foundation raises money for our city parks, all 450 of Los Angeles' city parks. Came here to the park today, had a great day. I had a fantastic day for the 5K, and what a beautiful day with so many thousands of people running. Oh, I think it's great to get people out to the open park or involved. I love it. I used to do the half marathon. A little bit tough for my legs because it's on the road, but the 5K is just enough. It's a beautiful place, beautiful weather and awesome people, so I'm really happy to take part here. Over at Dodger Stadium, Dodger Mania was at a fever pitch as fans donned their favorite blues for the 7th annual Dodgers Fan Fest. Check it out. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to lay down in the field that the Dodgers play on. My community would come to see my team in my community. As a super fan, I have fun with it. Now, I've been doing this since 2012. It's going to be a great year for Dodgers. <laughs> it's awesome to see that as much as we give and we love the Dodgers, they give back. So I was standing over there and Justin Turner came up and I, he touched my hand and I'm never washing this hand because Justin Turner touched it. This next story can't get any cuter. A newborn at the LA Zoo is getting lots of attention, but he's growing fast so you better hurry. So we had our Poodoo Fawn born here at the Los Angeles Zoo. He's out on exhibit for everyone to see with his mom and dad. He is still pretty small and he has the spots. Um, and at about three months old, he's going to be full grown. This is the first time in a while we've had an exhibit of Poodoo. Um, so we're really excited for guests to be able to see them. So when we announced on social media, it was just going to be, you know, here's a really cute baby animal that you can enjoy. Started to see responses on social media from people saying, oh, looks just like Hitchon. Oh, that's that Poodoo should be named Hitchon. And we were all like, what's that? Who is that? 
started to look into it and fans of the K-pop group NCT have already said that the singer Hechon resembles a Pudu. So our baby Pudu is now named Hechon and you can visit him at the LA Zoo with his parents Steph and Mario and uh, he'll be he'll be full size grown up pretty soon. So if you want to see him with his spots looking like an adorable little fawn, you should come soon. Good news when it comes to crime in our city. The mayor puts his presidential bid to rest and a new program helps put more boots on the ground to keep neighborhoods safe. All this in City Beat. The two things I love the most, my family and my city, are right here in LA. So I've decided not to throw my hat into the ring to run for president in 2020. Ending months of speculation, LA Mayor Eric Garcetti has chosen not to seek the Democratic nomination for president, indicating he'll stay right here and continue to helm LA's continuing advances in technology, economics, and humanitarian issues. To that, the mayor announced that major crime in Los Angeles has dropped significantly since last year. These decreases directly correlate to the mayor's initiative in getting more officers out from behind desks and back on the street. Councilwoman Nuri Martinez announced a new volunteer community patrol program at LAPD Mission Division. The program is designed to support ongoing LAPD efforts in the valley. I'm going to ride along with one of the teams that we're going to go look for stolen vehicles. These community members are all volunteers, leaders in their neighborhoods, so they know every square inch of these neighborhoods in this community, and they're the extra eyes and ears for the police department. From one-of-a-kind jewelry, paintings, and arts and crafts, the East LA Art Walk highlights the work of local talent and delivers quite a block party. East LA Art Walk, it's a community organized event. It's been happening for five years at the corner of First Street and Indiana, and it happens on the second Sunday of each month. Rain, shine, or lightning. When we came up with the idea of the art walk, we wanted for something to be educational and beautifying for the community at the same time that it brought additional food traffic for the local businesses. We bring a vibe to the community every second Sunday and I know it's appreciated because we always have a dance floor in front of my uh, booth. We try to bring a diverse, um, a diverse pool of entertainment. We have local vendors, local designers. We have painters, local crafters that live within two mile radius, East LA Ball Heights Commerce area, who come and partake of the event. The, commu the local community gets to appreciate the art. We do a silk screening workshop as well with Cote Varte Studios. It allows the community to come and actually learn how to print as well as create their own stencils so they can make their own art and kind of hopefully spark the next generation to be young artists and entrepreneurs as well. It's free for the public, it's family friendly, pet friendly, LGBTQIA friendly. Well, we are making sure that we are um, catering to all of these subcultures within our community. We're trying to create a thriving economy for artists and entrepreneurs to exist. We're trying to create more business and more wealth in our communities of color. Everybody should at least experience it one time and find out for themselves how awesome it is. But if unique food is more your thing, check out Smorgasburg LA. It's got everything you can think of from lobster, whole fried fish, Cuban sandwiches, and ice cream. All of my favorites. It's LA's top destination for every taste. Hope you're hungry. Zach Brooks, I'm the general manager of Smorgasburg LA. S-M-O, S-M-O, S-M-O. Well, the event is based on like food. Uh, they have all different types of vendors, um, people who have different little shops, so um, definitely something that's fun to come to on Sundays. So Smorgasburg's actually a New York uh, company. It started in New York, uh, where we run a bunch of different markets. Uh, it opened in L.A. two and a half years ago, but it's not a New York market plopped down in L.A. It's actually a 
LA market. All the vendors are are from here in LA. Well, honestly, this is the first time here. We're driving all the way from uh, Riverside. Um, everything looks pretty nice. There's a lot of variety and diversity around. There's a lot of different foods you could try out. Definitely a lot of delicious food. Well, I mean, this is some of the best food in Los Angeles. I have my friends here with me from out of town. They're from West Virginia, and I just wanted them to have a, a very good experience. There's pretty much something for everybody here. You can find every kind of food imaginable. We have some of the best Mexican food in LA. From seafood to vegan to Cuban, Puerto Rican. They have food vendors, they have ice cream vendors, they have beer vendors. We have Middle Eastern food, Asian food, barbecue. We want to try the lobster down there. percent free to get in every single Sunday from 10 to 4 and we have a huge parking lot that is free for two hours. So we have breakfast. So we have breakfast before you come here. Smorgasburg LA happens every Sunday so grab your bib and stretchy pants and visit la.smorgasburg.com. A new music series is about to take center stage, help connect those experiencing homelessness with service providers and celebrate Black History Month during a Pan-African Film and Art Festival. All this and things to do. Explore music, ideas, and the spoken word through Compose LA, an ambitious music presentation and companion lecture series happening in storied music venues throughout Los Angeles. In this inaugural workshop, Clock Shop LA will host a symposium entitled Nicole Mitchell's Spiderweb. Don't miss Compose LA, beginning Saturday, February 9th at 7.30 p.m. Clock Shop LA is located at 2806 Clearwater Street. For more information, visit clockshop.org. The Las Feliz Connect Day event is looking for a few good volunteers. The goal is to connect people experiencing homelessness with employment counselors, health professionals, and other service providers. Lend your helping hand to the Las Feliz Connect Day, happening Saturday, February 12th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Friendship Auditorium. To volunteer for the event, email cd4.issues at lacity.org. Head on down to the Baldwin Hills Crenshaw Plaza for the 27th annual Pan-African Film and Arts Festival. The festival features over 170 new black films from around the world and exhibits from over 100 fine artists and unique craftspeople. Treat yourself to the Pan-African Film and Arts Festival happening February 7th through the 18th at the Cinemark Ray 15 Theaters at Baldwin Hills Crenshaw Plaza. For details, visit paff.org. And that's a look at some things to do. That's it for this edition. I'm Umayma Rashid. From all of us here at LA This Week, thank you for joining us. A reminder that you can catch us online at lacityview.org. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. See you next time for more LA This Week.